In this video, we're continuing our series with Key Comic Book Spotlight, this time on Namor the Submariner. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're doing another key comic book spotlight, this time on Namor the Submariner. Now, if you're new to my channel or this series, what I typically do with key comic book spotlight is just point out five key and or grail comic books that the comic book collecting community often pursues when they're fans of the character. And in this one, we're doing Namor the Submariner. But before I get into the book for today, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, and I would appreciate it. All right, that said, let us get into the books for today and with Namor, with all of these series, it was so hard to narrow it down to five. In fact, I was unable to narrow it down to five uh, simply because for my first pick, I have a plethora of books because for those who don't know, Namor is one of those characters that was actually created in the golden age of comics, uh, outside of Marvel comic books, actually in timely comic books. So for that reason, I'm going to look at a few golden age comic books. And of course, the one I really have to start us off with is of course, Motion Pictures Funnies Weekly number one. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of Namor the Submariner. This was written by Bill Everett back in 1939. Yeah, that's how old this book is. And this was one of those rare instances where uh, this particular comic, if you want to call it that, was actually given out in movie theater. So uh, Namor the Submariner kind of making a sleeper entrance into the comic book space. Now, of course, uh, this is one of those comic books that, uh, you know, it, it's it's almost invaluable in, in, in how much you want to price this for. I mean, there's only only a handful of copies that exist. I, I actually believe there's like a countable, like less than, you know, 50 is what I, I actually believe the pop count on this comic book is. But uh, needless, regardless, this is the first time that Namor the Submariner was in fact created. So for that reason, this is actually considered uh, his first appearance. Now, uh, what they would end up doing later on uh, in, in the year when Marvel Comics would uh, create their very first title or Timely Comics would create the, sort of the Marvel Comics title, they would make Marvel Comics number one. And this would actually be known as the first appearance of the Human Torch, but they would do a reprint of the storyline in the Motion Picture Funnies comic book and put it in this book here as well. So uh, I don't know what you want to call this. If you want to still call this as well uh, as the, uh, or you want to call this the first appearance of Namor as well, uh, maybe you want to call it the second appearance of Raymore, but uh, Namor, but essentially it's a reprint that made its appearance in Marvel Comics uh, number one. And of course, this is like literally the holy grail when it comes to wanting to own Marvel Comics. Comics. Uh, this is like a, a, a the the collector's collector comic book, uh, I guess is a way to call it. And of course, this is one that you know is is hard to put a put a number on the value of these things. But these are books that have gone for the million dollar range or so. Again, Namor made his appearance in these two issues. He had a uh, a run all throughout the golden age of comic books. And there's just two that I want to point out to you guys as well. This is still for my number one pick within Namor. This is uh, Marvel Comics uh, number four. This is the first cover appearance of Namor the Submariner. Uh, so th there you see him on the cover, uh, making that great, great uh, punching not Nazi pose, which was always, of course, you know, the great uh, uh, cover art that they would do in this golden age because this was during, of course, the World War II era where there was a lot of sort of propaganda going on. And then the next one I want to point out in the golden age here is uh, from 1941. This is Submariner Comics number one. This would be his first solo title, uh, The Submariner. There you see him again fighting Nazis. So a great golden age comic book to have. Uh, any one of these, you know, are, are going to be uh, almost nigh impossible for a lot of us uh, normal comic book collectors to get our hands on. But for the sake of this video, I thought it'd be great to just talk about them anyways. Motion Picture Funnies number one, Marvel Comics number one, Marvel Mystery Comics number four, and Submariner Comics comics number one. All right, let's go on now to my second pick here. My second pick here, uh, effectively for this video, could be my first pick, and that is Fantastic Four number four. And this is written, of course, by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby. Came out in 1962. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of the Submariner in the Silver Age of comic books. So kind of like Captain America or the old Human Torch, uh, you know, th these characters were created in that golden age of comic books. Uh, they were like that invaders group where they had a lot of stories in World War II. Well, 
In 1962, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby would bring back the Submariner character and bring him into the Marvel Comics fold, and he would make his first Silver Age appearance here in Fantastic Four number four. And, you know, for the most part, because Golden Age comic books are so, so extremely rare to come by, especially in the batch that I had just pointed out to you, this comic book right here effectively is the Grail comic book for the Submariner. I mean, this is, a you know, sort of as good as you can do uh, for most comic book collectors. And for that reason, this is a book that has absolutely uh, exploded recently because there's so much anticipation that we might see the Submariner uh, in the, uh, the MCU. We know we're going to get Fantastic Four. There's rumors that he might show up in the Black Panther 2 movie. And for that reason, this is a book that has gotten extremely hot as of late. And what can you say about this book other than the fact that it's a classic 1962 book, great cover, first appearance of Submariner in the Silver Age, and one that I myself would love to get my hands on. And as we dig, dig into the numbers here, you'll see there is a 9.6 uh, six, uh, going fair market value around the $300,000 range, but the last sale was back in November of 2019. And then here at the bottom, you know, Go Collect has this around the $2,000 range. And I would say that that's pretty accurate overall. Uh, this is a book that has really spiked up recently. And, you know, you're not you're, you're not going to be able to find this book for less than, you know, $2,500, $3,000 or so. Uh, but, you know, who knows where this book is going to go if, in fact, we do get Namor in the MCU in some kind of way in the near future. All right, let's go on now to the next book here. And the next book I have is Tales to Astonish number 70. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would be considered uh, Namor the Submariner's first sort of solo series ongoing. Now, Tales to Astonish, of course, was a series that started with Ant-Man and Incredible Hulk, with, at least in terms of the superheroes that they were focusing on. But here in issue number 70 in 1965, they would turn over the series, move Ant-Man off of it, and put Submariner into it. And this would effectively be Submariner's first first solo ongoing series with regards to sort of Marvel Comics and the Silver Age. And this is just a great book for that reason, uh, Tales to Astonish 70. This is actually the first appearance of King Neptune as well. So you have Neptune in there, which of course, you know, ties to the, the Atlantis mythos, that sort of underwater uh, universe that we all know, the lore that surrounds uh, sort of the, those uh, uh, tales of, of the underwater seas like like Neptune and Poseidon, etc. And for that reason, this is sort of a great uh, uh, Submariner book to get your hands on if you want to sort of see his name right there in the title uh, in the Silver Age. And as we dig into the numbers here, you'll see 9.8 selling fair market value around the $29,000 range or so. Uh, th their last sale was back in March of 2018. And then here at the bottom, you won't see too many CGCs slabbed at the very, very low end, but this is a book that has really heated up just like the Fantastic Four one recently. This is one that when I go onto eBay, I see this being sold around the $100, $150, $200 dollar range on the low end. So definitely one that is is getting more and more hot as we uh, potentially make our way to seeing Namor in the MCU. All right, let's go on now to my next pick here. My next pick is actually going to be Submariner number one from 1968, written by Roy Thomas. And this is, of course, the first ongoing solo series of Submariner. There you see big premiere issue. Now, kind of like the last book, Tales to Astonish, uh, and also uh, for those who know Tales of Suspense, those would be sort of an ensemble run where you'd see Iron Man and Captain America and Submariner and Hulk, etc. And they'd all have like, you know, uh, uh, shared stories within these comic book runs. But in 1968, what they would do is they would actually launch the initial series for all of these various characters. And that's where you would see these big premiere issues. You had Silver Surfer and Iron Man and Captain America and Hulk all having their big premiere issues. And additionally, Submariner would also get his big premiere issue uh, that you see right here. And this is one of the great comic book covers if you want to get your hands on Submariner. I mean, just look at how heroic he is standing there. I mean, it's really cool to see like the aqua blue color feels very fitting to his character being uh, an underwater themed superhero. And for that reason, this is a book that I feel like was very undervalued for a long time. I mean, Granted, still not a very cheap book, but one that you could find a decent copy for like a hundred bucks uh, as recently as say six months ago. But with this new comic book market and you know the anticipation of Submariner possibly making his way in the MCU, this is a book that has absolutely exploded recently and everybody is cl uh, clamoring to get this one. And for good reason, because this is just a great book regardless. And Submariner, uh, the character, is one that I think has been sort of underrated within Marvel comic books for a long time, simply because he hasn't had 
his heyday in pop culture. But when we see him uh, in the, you know, on the silver screen yelling Imperious Rex, uh, I mean, I think that there's going to be a whole new group of fans that become uh, uh, obsessed with the Submariner character. And this might be the book uh, for them if they want to get their hands on something great that relates to him. And as we dig into the numbers here, you'll see 9.8 selling fair market value, pushing around the $10,000 range. And there you can see right here, look, take a look at this, June 2021, May 2021, June, 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 May, June, June. You can see that everyone is gravitating to this book. This happens to be the hot collector item right now for this character, uh, because I think for most people, it is probably the most attainable uh, when it comes to the numbers. The Fantastic Four book, number four, is so expensive as of late. And then down here at the bottom, you won't see too many uh, CGC slabs for this one. But again, a book that has gotten extremely hot, and I see constantly being sold around the low end for you know, 250 300 350 uh, depending on the deal you can find yourself on eBay. All right, let's go on up to my last pick here. My last pick is actually going to be Super Villain Team Up Number One. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would be when Namor and Doctor Doom would be put in a series together where they would actually team up as super villains. And why do I have this one on my list? Well, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this book in particular is that I think that core to Namor's character is that he is the true, true anti hero of Marvel comic books. I mean, I know a lot of people like to point to Deadpool as kind of being the anti hero, but Namor was the anti-hero before being an anti-hero was a cool thing to do. He was somebody that always, you know, uh, dipped between being a hero and a villain. He fought against the Fantastic Four. He allied with the Fantastic Four. He fought against the Avengers. He allied with the Avengers. So you could see that Namor uh, is always kind of dipping out, uh, in and out between being a hero and a supervillain. And for that reason, this is a book that I think is super interesting, uh, that I think is kind of core to his character, where we see him actually being called a supervillain in this team up comic book. Now, uh, for those who don't know, Namor made his first appearance uh, in that Fantastic Four uh, number four book. But in Fantastic Four number six, uh, Namor was. Would make his second appearance alongside Doctor Doom, and they would actually team up against the Fantastic Four. So it sort of set this relationship of, Fant of uh, Namor and Doctor Doom to kind of uh, team up with each other. So uh, when they launched this series, I feel like this is very significant to the Submariner's uh, uh, storyline, as they would sort of uh, have to uh, team up as villains that were kind of helping each other get to where they wanted to go. And I have a suspicion that when we see uh, Namor in the MCU, perhaps we're going to see him in the Black Panther film they might actually make allusions to Dr. Doom in Latveria as well. And I think that the Black Panther, Namor, Dr. Doom storyline is all going to be connected in some kind of way. And when that happens, I do think that this is going to be a book that is very significant for that reason. Supervillain team up number one. And as we dig into the numbers here, we'll see 9.8 selling around the $270 range uh, last sale back in March of 2021. And then here at the bottom, you know, you're not going to find this book slab too often, but this is a book that I see generally on eBay being sold around that, you know, maybe 20, 25, 30, $40 range or so, depending on the grade and depending on the deal that you can find for yourself. Well, that is all I have for this video. Those are my five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. How many Golden Age comic books has Namor been in? Uh, however many that is, that's how many picks I had for the, this video here. Uh, but again, Namor, Submariner, great character. Uh, one that I think is super undervalued and underrated in Marvel comic books. I think once we start to see him represented on the screen, he's really going to take the world by storm and people are going to start to give him kind of the respect that he deserves. I think he's got a lot going for him. Super powerful character. And when we start to see things like Atlantis, uh, that's going to be, you know, kind of a household name and household storyline uh, in pop culture. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next one.